I'm going to be sharing our Vision Arise Sunday, kind of where we are, where we're going, and um, I've been sitting on this for a few months, um, and I'm excited this morning that I get to share it with you, um, and I, I just want to invite God into the process. Uh, because it's all very well me saying, as senior leader, this is the way we're going, but actually we want to be going the way that God's going, yeah? Yeah, we want to be building the house that God wants us to build. We want to be doing what God's doing and align with that. Uh, and so, Father, that is our heartbeat, that is my heartbeat, that um, we would hear enough, we would see enough to be able to see what you're up to and understand the times that we're in and what specifically you have for us as individuals in this house, but actually as a church together. And Lord, as I speak today, I pray for your empowerment. I pray for your strength. Um, I pray for your gifting for me that I'd be able to communicate the things that I've been sensing that are on your heart. And I pray for us as a congregation that we too would have open hearts, soft hearts, to see what our part is in this grand adventure that we're walking in at the moment. For your glory, we pray. Amen. I honestly believe that we're in the most exciting time in history. Um, yeah, The kingdom it talks about goes from glory to glory to glory. Um, and although it's been a hard few years uh, uh, in our lifetime in terms of the grand scheme of things that God is up to incredible things across the earth in a way that I don't believe that any of us have experienced in our lifetime. How many of you have actually been in a pandemic before? No? Um, and although that, that feels like a, a dark thing, and I don't believe that that is the Lord at all, that the Lord is actually working in this in, in ways that um, we, we would scarcely believe. Um, and so, actually, before I jump into uh, where it is that I believe God is taking us, I believe that we need to understand where we are now. Where on the map are we in terms of uh, the church, in terms of global things, and the church in terms of us and where we're going? And as part of this, I'm going to be talking about things that are outside of us that are impacting uh, where we are um, and where we might be going. And then internally as well, we're going to look at some dynamics to do with the church, uh, our church specifically, and there's a number of things I want to kind of share around that. And that gives us the ability then to understand, okay, this is where we're at on the map, and it allows us to have some understanding of, okay, when we go from this place, how is it that we go? Um, so, as I said, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and none of us have been through a pandemic before, and I know amongst us there's some people that would even debate whether or not this is a real pandemic uh, or not, um, and I'm not wanting to get into that, but what I think we can all agree on is that what is happening in terms of this global virus that is spreading across the earth right now is that it is affecting everything. Um, and it's not been a two-week exercise. Who, who remembers the we're going into lockdown for two weeks announcement by the government? We are past 18 months now. I think we're around 20 months into this. Uh, the impact of this virus on our lives and the government measures and the, the impact worldwide of what's been happening. Um, and in history, there are events that take place, whether or not they're, they're pandemics or, or plagues or um, natural disasters or things that take place like global events, which they call black swan events. Have you heard of that term? Um, a black, some of you are nodding. Well, a black swan event is an unexpected event that shows up um, and it has a massive macro effect on all of our lives. And this virus is one of those events that although um, virologists were saying this was possible, they were always putting it off to the future. Well, it's happened, and the actual impacts of what has happened are uncharted territory, uh, not just for churches, but for us all. Um, and uh, many people right now are 
somewhat lost as to where are we and where are we going with life. Um, I know when I speak to uh, lots of, of you in a kind of a pastoral sense that, that often I hear back from people that they feel overwhelmed, that they feel uh, hopeless, that they feel confused, that they, they feel like their whole life has been turned upside down. Um, and that's because we're in a black swan event. And so it's important that we note that because that's had a massive impact on us as a church, hasn't it? Um, 20 months ago when we went into this thing, we were meeting weekly on Sundays um, and the church was in a, a rhythm whereby uh, many of you would come numbers of times a month to church. And during the course of these 20 months, because of the pandemic, it stopped our ability to be able to actually come in person to our Sunday morning gatherings. And our Sunday morning gatherings had really been the main dish of what we've been doing as a church. A lot of what took place in the church happened off the back of the things that were taking uh, place on Sundays. And so when that was stopped, not for two weeks, but for multiple months at a time, the rhythm of our church life was thrown uh, askew and and I would say to this day, we still haven't recaptured that. Um, I know many people are watching online, for example, now uh, because of their concerns around coming back into a, uh, a group of people where there's chances of them to contract the virus. Um, and numbers of you that would be opposed to wearing masks and some of the government restrictions, when we have had those restrictions in place in the church, you chose to stay away. Um, and I say that just to say that right now we're still experiencing the impact of um, this virus on the rhythm of our church life, and we need to take note of that. Um, and when I talk to pastors across the city, that the impact on their churches can be seen in a similar kind of a way on their church communities. Willow Park, which um, is an amazing church across town, um, Phil Collins was telling me a few weeks ago that on their Sunday morning services, they have around a quarter to uh, two-fifths of their normal congregation coming on, a, on their Sunday morning since they've reopened uh, since the government has actually opened. Other churches across the city have actually closed their doors because people aren't coming back. Um, and so in, in the midst of this, churches have been trying to navigate uh, a way through. And I'm, I'm gonna share more about this at the AGM in terms of what we did um, to respond to this. But I just wanna highlight this external factor that has uh, caused us to have to adapt our play group, uh, play group playbook in this season. All right, let's have the next slide, please. So in the midst of this, it's important that we take an inventory of some of um, both the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in, um, in our midst right now. So we've been blessed compared to, again, many of the churches that I speak to in the city, whereby we've had a committed core of people that despite the challenges that COVID has thrown them, that we've adapted and we've pivoted and, and, and we've rolled with the punches. And, and in, in the midst of all of this, many of our um, small groups adapted to become revival groups to, and adapted to become emotional support groups. Do you remember that? That was all pivoting to, to uh, allow us to be able to meet when the restrictions were in place that made it challenging to be able to get together. Um, and we've been blessed to have a number of, of our small groups, whatever you want to call them, that have continued to run through this time. And actually, the, through the midst of all this uh, challenge and struggle, um, they've actually created a, a really solid community where uh, people have found life and pastoral support and connection and God in the midst of those things. And I wanna acknowledge um, our small groups that ran uh, in the various capacities through COVID and I wanna honor and thank you for that. Um, and then prayer as well has been something that we continue to run in the midst of COVID. And we adapted as um, at the beginning of the year, the prayer nights um, to becoming counter nights because 
it was apparent that God was doing something really unique in the midst of our prayer nights. And I want to thank Deborah um, Bulford for all that she did within those occasions. Um, and then you will have seen a massive upgrade, or maybe not, to our tech team. We probably invested something like $20,000 to, to bring our tech capacities to allow us to stream the services. And we bought new cameras, new computers, um, to bring our tech offering up to a level where we were able to continue to stream to you when you were at home. And many of you actually, um, certainly during the early part of COVID, actually streamed into our Sunday morning gatherings and other events that we were running. How many of you did that either? Yeah, most of you. Um, and actually what we've seen is that there's been a, a bit of a waning of our online community. Um, and this is reflective of something I hear all across the world uh, from churches that went online, that the initial buy into online world was, was through the roof. And over time, people just weren't finding the spark that actual physical gatherings brought them. And, and so uh, for many churches, they're reporting, people are still watching online, but it's nowhere near the levels of online connection that we saw near the beginning. All right, some other things. Can we see the next slide, please? The chart, okay. So good news. Through this, and this is a real miracle, and again, when I speak, I, and, and I like to kind of check things out with my pastoral friends across the city, most churches have been hammered financially. We are 117% of our budget uh, forecast. Yeah. So we're actually ahead of the curve. Um, and that's great. And, and, and that's been a result of your, your giving. And also we have received a, uh, a subsidy where we've qualified for it from the government. And that's actually meant we are ahead of our curve. And I praise God for that. We can go back to the previous slide, James. That's a miracle, by the way. All right. So some of the weaknesses or things that, are challenges to us. There's lots of people that aren't actually coming back yet and won't come back until the restrictions are lifted um, or life is back to normal. Um, and that's just a fact of life. Um, but it does mean we, we don't know the full extent of who is part of us and who isn't part of us. Uh, another factor that is out there is that um, also getting volunteers in this season is a challenge and we rely so much on our volunteers uh, but uh, again talking to other pastors across the city that many people are holding back committing themselves either for health uh, concerns they, they don't want to expose themselves to uh, to potential um, opportunities to catch the virus, um, or they're just uncertain about gathering uh, with people. And so getting volunteers in this season has been a, a challenge. Um, and, and it's just a fact, um, and it's something we're rolling, rolling with. We have um, an, a blessed older congregation, but I share this in the weakness area because um, the church is always one generation from extinction. And as, as our church, and you guys and us and me now, uh, begin to age, we have to look to the future, our young people, our children. And I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, and then, uh, what other things? So opportunities. Okay, so these are some of the New Life DNA pieces that actually allow us to pivot and adapt and roll with the punches that we, of the season we're in. So New Life is a pioneering church. It's part of our DNA, DNA. In fact, many of us love uncertainty. Your favorite services on Sunday are when Holy Spirit throws the order of service out the window and, and things go wild. They're your favorite moments in the church. How many of you can relate to that? Yeah, that is because that's part of our DNA. If you went to a more traditional church, they would be horrified to sit in a service like that. 
um, and probably would, would run for the hills. But we love that. Um, and that's because that's part of who God's made us to be as a house. And what that's given us is an adaptability um, and the ability to pivot change and, and try new things, which we have been doing in this, this season. So God bless our adaptability. Um, we've also got a history of innovation. In the city over our 35 years, we've often been at the forefront of trying new things, of birthing new things, of being the, the early adopters of doing new styles of church. Even um, in, in its earliest form, the worship that we have today, we're one of the first churches to have a guitar in church. Who remembers the old organs in churches? Yeah? I've never had one as far as I know. Um, and then here's an opportunity. There's plenty of opportunity for volunteer, volunteering right now. And with an older congregation, you guys have lots of time. And I want to tap into that. Okay. So some threats, and the threats are kind of from the outside in. Um, so things are changing so much that it's hard to come up with a definitive plan going forward. Like, for example, um, the government came up with their four-stage recovery plan. That got thrown out the window about three or four times. And so it, it's not a criticism, but it's an observation that we don't know which way is up and what way is the right way in this season? And so very often we come up with plans which within a week or sometimes multiple times in a week, we have to adapt and change. And so as a church, we need to be flexible and we need to be, uh, we need to be real with some of the uh, re uh, recognition of the uncertainty around us. All right, what else? Okay. If we could go to the slide with the feet and the different arrows going back, status quo and forward, please. That one, brilliant. So which way do we go? Um, and, and that's really what today is about. With all of these factors in play, we have to chart a way forward or not. And there, there's some of our, our um, decision choices. There are some churches in, ch uh, in town that are effectively choosing to mothball in their season, where they wrap themselves in cotton wool and say, okay, on the other side of the pandemic, we'll come out and come what may, that's our chosen strategy right now. And so instead of, um, uh, instead of kind of charting a way forward, they just put themselves on deep freeze. And I don't believe that that's what God's calling us to do. Um, there, there is another opportunity, which is where we're trying to recover that which we were in the past. And, and that's a valid consideration in terms of choices that we want, that we want to hark back to the way things were pre-COVID, and even maybe in the glory days of the church. Um, and so one of the considerations is, do we try and do that? Do we try and recover what we were and go go backwards, so to speak? Or do we try and hold the status quo and just try and hang in there and try and get on the other side of COVID and then move forward? Or do we actually say, no, God's got something for new life and global pandemic or black swan event or not, that new life is still part of God's plans and purposes for Kelowna and our world. And I want to suggest to you that that is actually God's heartbeat for us. Because the kingdom of heaven doesn't stop when world events happen. The, the, the mission of the church of Jesus Christ to announce King Jesus and to advance the kingdom hasn't changed. The circumstances around us may have changed and we need to take recognition of them. But the only impact and bearing that they have is that they affect how we do what we're meant to be doing. So we are going forward, folks. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we need not to go back, but we need to remember who we are. If we can have the purpose, the mission and the vision slide, the three 
slidey thing. Our why, our how, how, and our what. I don't know if James is still there. All right, well, I explain it. That's the one. Um, so who we are is still what God is calling us to be. And I, 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 want, I don't want to go into detail in this slide because I talk about this often. But this church, New Life Center, was, was birthed. And when it was birthed, it was birthed as a specific kind of a church. It had a particular kind of a flavor. It was a church that pursued the king and his kingdom. What I mean by that is we announced that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and we were inviting people into a relationship with him. But more than that, we weren't just telling a history of a person. We were inviting people to experience the personhood of Jesus Christ. So this church, one of the hallmarks of this church is that God is present with us at all times, Emmanuel. And we've experienced something of him this morning in our midst. It's one of the reasons I hear that people come to this church and are attracted by it. They may not be able to articulate it, but when I ask them, what is it about your, your, uh, why you come here? Many of you actually say, oh, I just feel God here. Or I hear him talk to me here. Or I, um, I'm touched by God. Or I, I experience the voice of God as we did this morning speaking to us. And they're the reasons that people are attracted to this community. And so one of the hallmarks that is, is part of our DNA is the presence of God. And so as we look to the future, we need to recognize that that is part of what it is that we are going to fish with uh, fish people with the presence of God, the presence of God. All right. Um, and then secondly, uh, within those distinctives, we need to also recognize some other things. And that is, where did I write these notes? Okay, I'm going to keep moving. Oh, activation and discipleship. As an apostolic church, and what I mean by that is a church that sees the kingdom of God, part of what we are is not a, just a place where you experience God, but you are trained and equipped to actually then take that out into the spheres of uh, influence that you touch, your, your families, your workplaces, and, and the passions that you have. And so that is part of our DNA. And so as we look to the future, we go recognizing this is the, the tribe that we are. So where is it that we're heading? Now, as I was praying and asking God for some bearings and saying, God, where is it that we're meant to, meant to go? What is it that we're meant to do? I heard him say the word arise. Arise, And I've shared this in an email with you before, but I want to unpack this because this is loaded. All right. So Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and the king to the brightness of your dawn. Here's the thing. When Jesus presences himself and shows up in our midst, and not just on a Sunday morning, but when you take him into the marketplace, because of the light of God in you, you are a beacon of hope and a message of the gospel to people. You are God's advertising to the world. And part of this next season is you, us helping you to turn the light up in your lives and to, to teach you how to sustain that in such a way that people begin to ask, what is different about you? What is, what is there about you? Tell me, why are you different? And it does happen. I've experienced that many times in my life. Right, the Greek word in the New Testament for arise appears in the numbers of places. And it means to arise from sleep, to awake, to recall from the dead, and to cause someone to wake up. Um, so Jesus, Peter's mother-in-law, you remember she was sick? 
Jesus heals her and she arises from a bed and he, she serves them tea and coffee. And Jesus arose from his sleep in the boat and he stilled the storm. Jesus forgave the lame man and t- told him to arise from his mat and he walked. Um, and then Jesus resurrected the young girl and she arose. And then Jesus commanded the disciples to um, heal the sick and raise the dead. And all of those different expressions of arise are from the same Greek word, and they all apply to us. And so Jesus is arising over this house and through this house. And as I was praying into this word arise, I came across this prophetic word that was given not to this church, but it applies to this house. And I've said, I take this. Um, And this is a powerful prophetic word. It says, surely as God has planned, so it will be. And as he has purposed, so it will happen. You, new life, will emerge from the ashes as a new phoenix You will be totally, sorry, you'll be fully restored and you'll be reestablished and you will roar. And so on the picture, um, and you probably can't see it there, but there's a picture of a phoenix in the background. And so I believe that there's a symbol that God has over this house at the moment. It's not the dove, it's the phoenix. Let the phoenix arise in each of you, in each of you. So what does this specifically mean for us? Well, revival groups. Um, I really believe God wants to do an inside out job. Freely you've received, freely you give. And so the heart of the church is the community of the church. And the one of the clearest expressions of community is in the revival groups. We have reconstituted our small groups because we want them to be an experience of revival, revival community in your life. And if um, many of you are already in a revival group, but if you're not, we, we want you to get in one. If you simply are going to come on a Sunday, and for many of you, the on average, I observe probably... Um, and this doesn't apply to everyone, but the average new lifer will come at the most two times a month. If two times a month is your only experience of life in this church, you're gonna fall short of what God has for you through this house. God wants to put you in a family within the church. Sunday is a blessing and and it will continue to feed what we're doing. But God is going to shape and he's going to format you in these revival groups. Our revival groups are going to be, one revival group a month will be designated to run the third service of the month. Why? Because they're places of empowerment. You're not simply coming to get anymore. You're now activated ministers of the kingdom to other people in the church. And so your group becomes a center, and each of the groups carries something different. And we encourage people to try out the different groups that we have there, and there'll be new groups coming online. But we want you to find your family within the church, family within the family, and we want you to be a part of that family. Um, You will be activated and empowered, and you will serve the body in those places. All right. Um, Each of the groups will have an upward, inward, and outward uh, focus. What I mean by upwards is God, yes? Worship. You're there for Jesus. It isn't a lion's club or community club. Um, Jesus is the reason we come together. The inward focus is discipleship. If you're coming there, yes, you're coming for community, and that can be transformational, and you're coming, you'll you'll be prayed for, um, but really, God is wanting to birth transformation into his image in an increasing way in your life, so you'll be discipled in those groups. And then once a month, we are requiring the groups to find something outside of the walls of this church where they touch um, the city or the world. And we're saying to the groups, you come up with what it is that you want to do. We want you to not just be an inward-focused disciple 
God, or, um, God honoring uh, group. We want you to touch the world because that's why we're here. And so you get to decide what that is. And we're also asking the groups to actually pick one of our, um, I was going to say missions projects. Yes, missions projects, that's the right word. Pick a missions project as a group and you take ownership for that project within the church. You literally are in contact with the people that run the project or the missionaries. And you report back to the church uh, about what's happening in each of those areas. So they, they're our revival groups. Okay, children and youth. All right. So we, we recognize that the children are the future of the church. Without investing in this area, the church, as wonderful as we are, the kind of the olding population of the, uh, of the church, and you, you mothers and fathers of the church, we, we need to invest in our children. Um, and we recognize that uh, with the challenges that come with attracting volunteers, that we have to be intentional about investing in this area. And I'm excited to announce, and we're gonna introduce this person in a minute, but we have a new children and youth pastor. Yes. Hannah Feitner. <laughs> yeah. And we're really excited uh, to introduce you in the coming weeks to Hannah. Hannah's going to be starting in mid-October uh, just because she's finishing up with her current job with Thrive and she needs a break between that. But the programs will be running from October and we'll have something for kids and youth. All right, so we're excited about that. Um, then presence focus groups. We've got the intercessory prayer that's going to be starting up. Um, we're going to be probably doing encounter nights. Uh, we've got our prophetic community group and our healing center. And all of those groups are gonna continue to run as they have through COVID. And then we're also investing into pastoral support. We're just kind of finalizing details around that. We have a team of people that ring you and we want the pastoral support to happen within your revival groups, because that's your family. But we recognize that there are other deeper needs that are showing up in this season. And so uh, we're investing in this area, okay? Um, and then worship. Whoop, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm excited to announce we have a new worship pastor. So Christina Morris, who is leading with Sarah Lynn today, is um, coming on as our worship pastor for two days a week. And there'll be some more announcements in the coming weeks about that and her team. Um, but yeah, we're excited about that. All right. Um, okay, what else? Ooh, schools and seminars. So as an apostolic church, we recognize our mandate to equip and empower. And it feels ironic in this season that God would ask us to do that. But um, my team or some of my core leaders have been talking and praying around some of the uh, unique calls on this house, in particular around the prophetic. And we recognize that New Life has a responsibility to steward a city-wide um, mandate, the, the Eagle's Nest um, prophetic word that Bob Jones dropped in 2003. He came here and he said that there are three eagle's nests in the northwest of, of the Americas. Um, and one of those was Redding, California. The other one was Albany and then New Life, uh, not New Life, Kelowna as well. And each of them had a distinctive. And Kelowna's was an eagle's nest and New Life was where the word was deposited. We, when we prayed into that as a team um, a few months ago, it was very apparent that that call hasn't lifted. And so we're going to be investing in the prophetic. If you, I look around here and I'm like, wow, there's very prophetic people in this house. Why? Because of the call. And so we're gonna be investing in that. We'll be doing a school in April next year and an identity school in the fall. All right. I wanna introduce you to our staff and our volunteers. Some of our uh, people aren't here. Um, and I'm recognizing timing. So just to give the people that are coming up a heads up, you're literally gonna do a hello, this is, this is me and 
this is how you can get involved to the people and it's like 30 seconds because I'm going over already. Um, but I think people have gotten enough of a sense of what we're doing and where we're going. But I want you to see these amazing volunteers and before they come, um, I, I, I just want to give a personal thank you to our incredible volunteers. This is honestly, I've been in ministry for 15, 20 years, and I've never been in a time like this. Um, and some of the, the people, many people that you're going to see today are the reason we still have a church. They, they have given tirelessly behind the scenes. They have given of their time, money, resource, family time, um, because they see something on this house worth fighting for, and they love you and they want to serve you. Um, and we are honored to have such a high quality, high caliber of volunteers. And I personally want to acknowledge them for all they do. Um, but I want to show you their faces because although I'm the senior leader, I'm, I'm not this in the life of the church. I'm this. I'm at the, the bottom of the apex, empowering people to serve you and to use their skills and destiny. Um, and so... Um, if you are a, a, a volunteer kind of leader in this church, do you want to come on up? Um, please. So tech team leader, James Johnson. Um, my wife, Jody Koopman, sorry, I got that wrong the wrong way. Jody Koopman, first. Um, first and foremost, just does so much behind the scenes. Um, yep, come on, Karen. Um, our custodian, Al Baldry, isn't here, I don't believe. Amanda uh, Maury with uh, admin and finance. She also serves with her husband, Chris Maury, as our um, revival center, not revival, healing center team leaders. Um, our worship pastor, new worship pastor, Chris um, Morris. Children, our new children and youth pastor, Hannah Feichner. Prophetic community leader, um, Karen Horton, prayer and intercession, Deborah Bulford, dance leader, June Svensson, uh, and then our revival group leaders. Um, so Steve and Karen Horton, the men's group, Murray, uh, Swab, and then Peter and Maddie Botha, and then also a new seniors a revival group leader, Barb Forstyke. I didn't mention this to Barb. I know you love attention, so why don't you come up? Um, and then if I've missed anyone, and, and then there we have the volunteers that serve, yeah, as well, um, the teams, the various teams. Colin, uh, Colin, um, where are you? Colin Haynes is at the back. He's been serving for weeks and weeks and weeks and really carried the church. Yeah. Um, and then Sarah Lynn and Tim and all the other people, probably all can come up onto the platform. Yeah, and Sheila on the welcome team. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then Susanna. Come on down. And Susanna. Yeah. And then our board people you'll see later at the AGM in half an hour. Um, but we are blessed. And this is just a, uh, a drop in the ocean of uh, our team. But I feel really honored and blessed to serve with these guys and gals. Um, and I want us to pray for them because um, there's something about the anointing of God that we, that, that we need. Yeah? We, we, we can, I, I say this uh, to Jody. It's funny as a leader, a church leader. I can do my job, but it is easy to go through the motions and not lean into job, a uh, job. God as I do my job. And I, I don't want to ever do that. And I don't want these people to ever do that, to become so familiar with what they do that they don't uh, lean into God. And we want to pray for their hearts and for their blessing and their protection um, and for God to, to take them to the next uh, level um, in, uh, in and through their lives. Um, oh, and then Gary and all the kids in the tech booth. Yeah. And they're still filming. All right. So why don't you extend your hands? And we're going to pray. Yeah. So God Almighty, I thank you for each and every person here and the ones that didn't choose to get up um, or unable to get here. But we, we thank you for our amazing staff 
and our amazing volunteers and the people that you have gifted this church. Lord, I pray for the Ephesians 4 vision of the church, that you would appoint to us ministers who are apostolic, prophetic teachers, pastors, evangelists, to equip your body, this body, so that we would come into maturity in the fullness of Jesus. Lord, the spirit that you have on your son, would you place an increased measure, we pray, on these amazing leaders. Ooh, in Jesus' name. Yeah. And Lord, as we look to the future, we pray a protection over us all. I pray physically, spiritually, and emotionally that you would protect us. That you would cause this body to arise. Cause this body to arise. So that the glory of the Lord will be seen in a new way through our lives, in our city, and in the world. In Jesus' name. Amen.